Hello, and welcome to another session of Do Life. I am so thrilled to be alive, and I hope you are too. It's always a privilege to wake up and to actually sense the peace and the joy and above all the grace of God that keeps us. I am honored to be breathing, but my honoring God is a sign that I couldn't do it on my own. I hope you do the same. Let's remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. As we rejoice, let's be mindful and give thanks to God for his daily blessing, protection, and grace that sustains us. In today's session, I am telling you, it's going to be dynamic and amazing. And it's not too late. Please call your friends, your loved ones, and tell them to just tune in immediately because I'm about to introduce you to someone that's special. And our conversation is going to be just amazing. And you don't want to miss this. We want to come to your alley. We want to talk about things that you want to talk about. Things that are important to you. And things that resonate with you and also with our friends and audience out there. I have here today a wonderful young lady, an amazing entrepreneur, a great influencer, and one who is impacting many lives across the United States and beyond. Somebody I know so well, someone I've seen develop and actually become a great leader in her own sphere and also in her own skin. And many people are testifying to the effect of her leadership. That is Christian Hopkins. But three months ago, she became Christian Hopkins Vincent. So my dear Christian, what a joy to have you. What a joy. Man. I'm so happy to be here, what, always. <laughs> you have always, always, always inspired me. And you've always pulled a lot of things out of me. And we are dealing with a very important uh, series, which is Love Beyond the Pews. And today I want to talk to you. We want to come down to your alley, and I want us to converse, as we always do. You always ask critical questions, yes. and you also give me insights into what is happening out there. Mm -hmm. But today I want us to talk about relationship, how to build healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, today people are talking about love, and others have different understanding of it. There are those who talk about relationship and don't know where to begin or where to end. Yeah. But I want us to talk about relationship with this context, how to build a relationship with your loved ones, with your partner, mm -hmm. with your husband, spouse, children, and friends. Mm -hmm. And also some of the uh, dynamics that goes with it. So yeah. let it be a conversation and let's just talk. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, this is such an interesting topic because as I grow and develop, my relationships have changed because I have learned more of my identity and who I am. And not just my identity in the world, but my identity in the kingdom. And so being a young millennial, we oftentimes are very critical on ourselves. Um, but I think it's important because it promotes growth, right? And so when we think about a relationship we should first think about two people coming together and it's the way you feel or behave to a person. And in order to feel and behave, you have to first understand who you are. And then when you understand who you are, you have to understand your daily emotions. Not yearly emotions, not monthly emotions, but the daily emotions that you have. And so learning how to practice this self-awareness skill and understanding your daily emotions understands why you are upset with somebody, why you have conflict, or you might be conflict averse, or you might be, you know, scared of conflict. It's, it's all about who you are in order for you to develop a healthy relationship. So as I grew up and learned my identity, you know, my name is Kristen, and I found out long time ago, they didn't follow of Christ, yeah. right? And so things, if 
and not to say that none of my relationships, if you don't know Christ, you can't be my friend, but I learned that the circle around me, you gotta know God because it's the influence that I have and it's determining where I'm going in my life. And so relationships are very critical. They're very, um, they're very hard, but it's also an assessment of yourself. So really understanding who you are, that's when you start attracting the people that you want around you. And that's when you say, oh, you know, you're nice, but you're not for me, you know? And I, people joke around a lot, um, well, they laugh at, at me when I speak, but I go places and I always say, you know, when I think about relationships, I'll say to people, hey, how are you? What's your name? And what are your boundaries? You know, I want to understand because if I don't understand your boundaries and I, if your boundary or your core value is respect and I disrespect you, then we got a problem. Yeah. but you never told me up front, yeah. right? And so establishing healthy relationships is all about what do we do at the beginning of a relationship? How do we set the tone at the beginning of a relationship in order to see the longevity of the relationship? Wow. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Christian. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. You know, you made some critical points here about boundaries in relationship. Mm -hmm. And you said about um, when you meet people, you really want to make sure you don't disrespect them or you don't actually make them disrespect you either mm -hmm. by knowing exactly where you stand. It is very important. You see, in this present day and age, there are so many people who want to get into relationships mm -hmm. and they don't assess all of this. They don't take any of this into consideration. Mm -hmm. For them, relationship is, oh, I meet somebody who is nice, hello, hello. But again, their value structures doesn't come into question. Right. And they eventually find out that they are with the wrong persons and it creates more problems. Now, tell me, I mean, since we're talking about building healthy relationships, okay. Now, I remember uh, um, uh, the kind of people that you always aspire to talk to mm -hmm. who are people who are going somewhere. Yes. And also people who are serious about life but yet understand their environment. I mean, you've always, always shown interest in knowledge, but also you've always find a better way to serve and help humanity. Mm. Now, it is out of that, I believe, you came up with this. I mean, you became known mm -hmm. throughout uh, uh, United States with uh, social emotional learning. Yes. Now, when we talk about relationship and building healthy relationship, what can you say about social emotional learning and relationship that you've developed around it? Yeah, so what people don't understand is that we were pushed in high school and middle school to learn math and science and English, but no one taught us how to build a healthy relationship. And relationships are actually a skill. And so you have to know how to communicate, you know, have to know how to team build, you have to know how to have a social environment where you can actually go out and engage with folks. Um, and a lot of times in our industries, I find that there are introverted people, but we have to step out of that in order to, to build a, a healthy relationship. And so when we talk about social and emotional learning, there are three things that we have to know. Um, it's really about the process that adults and children acquire with the skills, the knowledge, and the attitudes. And so around those skills, knowledge, and attitudes comes five competencies. And one of those competencies is relationship skills. And understanding that that's a skill is the first step. Being aware that you have to practice a relationship is the first step. And so give you an example. You know, you said I just recently got married. Beautiful time in my life. And when we were going into the marriage or courting phase, I learned that there was a lot of things about me that I had to check <laughs> and I had to grow in, mm -hmm. but it was because I desired to have the relationship. When you desire to have a relationship with someone that you find valuable or you find brings value to you, you step your relationship skills up, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you wanna shut down and not communicate. I had to break that wall in the name of Jesus and say, where is the trauma coming from, right? Yeah. Where I wasn't communicating or I was running from problems and it was deep searching back to like abandonment, right? I'm gonna shut this down, I'm gonna walk away. And Josh, my husband, he did not allow that. You're not going anywhere. You're yeah. staying right, we're gonna walk through this. We're gonna, yeah. and 
that was a piece that stretched me, but it taught me that I valued and I desired for the relationship so much that I was willing to do the work. And a lot of times when we think about relationships, a lot of people, when you really assess your relationship, it's like, do I value the relationship to do the work to maintain it? Mm. And that's where I think mm. we mess up at. Mm. A lot of times we may not value the relationship like mm. we think we do. Mm. And so then we look at the relationship, it becomes lost or is, is not healthy or maintained. So there's work that you constantly have to do. Mm. And that's where that social emotional learning comes in because mm. it's not just a concept. Mm. It's a skill mm. that you have to acquire. You have to study. You have to study yourself and then to you know, better the relationship. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, she's married to an amazing man. <laughs> Josh Vincent is an amazing man. Yeah. The first day I met him, I just said, this is the right guy. You know, and uh, you presented him in a most honorable way. Yeah. You really wanted people who matter to you, people who know you well. Yes. Relationships that you built, that you value, to validate mm. him or at least tell you if this is a good guy for you. Yes. Of course, every one of us that saw him realized that he was not only a great guy, mm -hmm. but he's a guy that had strong values. He loves God, committed to you, and also wanted to walk with you in this journey. Yeah. Now, he has friends, good friends, yes. and uh, we were at the wedding, yes. and I got to meet, I mean, uh, the kind of friends that he hangs around. Yeah. And also the dynamics. I mean, between the friendship and your friends. Yeah. Now, how do you build this relationship with a great guy and his friends? How do they accept you into their fold? And also, how did your friends yeah. accept him into the fold? That's so good. And, and right after this, I got some questions for you because I okay. know that <laughs> you are the mentor of all mentors. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, but I feel like that... This was ease. We were really told that we were going into a season of ease. And Josh, I've never met a man where I met his friends and it was easy. It was like we already were, all of his friends' wives, it was so easy. And that's how I felt that it was a God thing and it also was something that was already ordained to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were all in the right political space mindsets. Mm -hmm. We were all in movement spaces. We were all change agents. Everybody is thought leaders mm -hmm. and just in a space to really change the world in our own way. And that's all of his friends. It's not a single person I know that is not thinking about how they can constantly change the world. And I was like, God, that's, that's the yeah. friends that I need. And if I want to gain any more friends, it's going to be those people. Wow. And so he introduced me into a totally different world um, because I was on the business side. You know, you on the business side, you hustling, grinding, yeah. you, you know, and then you in get introduced to this nonprofit world where you're still grinding, but you in a space where there are people doing the work just like you that actually want to see change. They are philanthropists, you know, and that's what were my people. So I felt like, it was, you know, what, what, uh, it's the my, my people will be your people, right? It was like that to, to, for me with Josh. Like, I was like, I'm going to follow you wherever you go because wow. you have shown me the character of who you are. And all of Josh's friends told me one thing about him was that his character is solid. He's never changed. He's always been the same person. Every single person told me this. And it wasn't like a cohort or rehearsed or it was like we were just having constant conversation. And I was like, these are the things that mean a lot to me and they're valuable but just thinking about this i won't i know that you are an amazing global leader i've seen you even grow in your own right over the years and really been inspired by so many things you've done and one of the questions i've always wanted to know was like how do you navigate different relationships in different seasons as well too because you know, you can maintain a relationship, but some seasons change. And when that's like me, I'm in marriage right now. Some of the friends I was friends with, I'm not yeah. friends with no more yeah. because I'm in a new season and it's okay. It's not a bad thing. But how do you navigate that or just shift as you elevate? That's a good question, Christian. Mm -hmm. um, um, one thing that I have learned over the years is that you may meet people 
that you like. Mm -hmm. You may meet people that you admire. You may meet people that you respect. And you may meet people that you want to be around because they bring different things to you. Mm -hmm. They either provoke you to action or they cause you to be a better person or they help you to understand values of man or also make you appreciate life. That's good. There are also some people that when you are around, they will, make, they will create a question in you, a hunger for God, mm -hmm. and also will let you be human. There are those who, when you have in you, your life for certain seasons, they would prepare you for your next assignment. And there are those that you want to keep for a long time. Mm. They may not even go away because they supplement and they add to your life and also they make you a better person. Mm. So what I have done over the years is that when I meet people, I ask different questions. And these questions I ask deep within me. Mm. Who is this person? And why is this person in my thoughts or this person close to me? Mm. What value can I add to them or what value can it bring into my life? It's not necessarily me taking advantage of them or they taking advantage of me, but how practical and Absolutely. useful can we actually sharpen each other's life? Mm -hmm. I have always believed that if somebody is going north and somebody is going south, they are going within a certain time frame. If you are not going in the same direction, don't waste each other's time. Keep going and keep going. So when I meet people, I ask this question, who is this person and why and how? Then the next thing I ask is, how do I see this person? Or what should I place this person? Should I consider this person somebody I know from a distance, from far, or bring the person near or close? Or this is somebody what with time I can develop a closer relationship with. Because everybody that comes into your life come with a special mission. Either they were sent by God or the devil sent them or they sent themselves. So you have to be very sensitive and to ascertain the person that comes into your life. So what I have done to navigate all this process is that Time tells mm -hmm. and time reveals things. So when people are close to you or close to me, I ask myself this question. Okay, this year or this years or this month, we've had a chance to discuss or share, pray, talk. These are the things I learned from this person. Mm. These are the things this person provoked in me. And it helps me to do two things. Like we talk about growth. How do I exercise trust? How do I exercise respect? Yes. How do I exercise honor? That's good. So that this person is not somebody that I take advantage of or they take advantage of me, but someone that I believe sharpens my life and brings the best out of me. So these are some things that I've done. Wow. Wow. And you know, I, I hear by you saying this is I hear you also checking to see people's core values. Yes. What do you really stand on? What is your foundation? What are you, what's not going to be moved, right? And by doing that, you're asking questions. Yeah. And I've learned that along the way. So I'm, this is more of an affirmation for yeah. me to continue to go mm -hmm. because I've been, and this is recently learning. This mm -hmm. is not like a long, you know, I've, I've learned as I'm elevating mm -hmm. that there are certain type of questions when you walk in a room that you ask someone that you know if they're for you or th this is just a one-time situation. Right. Right. And you taught me something a while back. Uh, you told me that you said, and I, I think it was for a broader context of limiting your access because if you continue to open your access, people lose value in you. Exactly. And that, like, I kept that. That's right. I don't even know if you know, I kept that thing because, and it wasn't in an intent to not be accessible, but there are seasons yeah. in your life where I'm realizing that you can't be accessible. Yes. God keeps you hidden. You're perfecting your craft. You're sharpening what God is giving you. You're reading, you're studying. And those are moments that God is going to put you on a stage yeah. or a platform and you're going to be prepared for it. But if you don't know mm -hmm. the seasons that you have to limit your access, mm -hmm. whew, 
yeah. it will hurt you. That's right. And so I, I just hear that about the core values. I think it's so good, but it's also super affirming to me mm-hmm. to, to understand that I'm headed in the right direction. Yeah. But it's because I have a good mentor. Wonderful. <laughs> and you know something too that's amazing? Christy, you know, whenever somebody doesn't appreciate your core value, yeah. you become cheap. Mm. And whatever, whatever becomes cheap is considered common. You don't have to become cheap and you don't have to be common. So your core values will set you apart from being cheap or common. Ooh. People without core values are cheap and are common. Mm. So that's one thing also that helps us to maintain healthy relationships. Yeah. When you find people, when I find people who don't respect time, mm-hmm. they will not respect your time. Mm. When you find people who don't value you, yeah. you cannot be of benefit to them. So I always say that whatever you don't value cannot be a blessing in your life. Don't become cheap mm. and don't become too common because there are those who would reduce you to that position. So for me to maintain and for us all to maintain a healthy relationship, we want to make sure that the people that know us mm-hmm. don't take us for granted. That's good. There are those when you become so kind and genuine yeah. and gracious to them, mm-hmm. they take your genuineness and your kindness for weakness. Yes. And you have to know exactly how to position yourself mm-hmm. so that they don't abuse you yeah. or misuse you. Yeah. People mm-hmm. can use you, but don't let them abuse you or misuse you. Mm. So I find that... This is good. You know why? <laughs> this is so good because this is something yeah. I'm currently going through right now in my life is mm-hmm. I learn that and this is super deep and i would i would say as a millennial i am into therapy yeah. now and it's really good because i what i notice is that when you are learning how to build these relationships you learn a lot about like a, your deeper self like what your childhood yeah and one thing i learned is that i used to i don't do it anymore but i used to overshare and I used to overshare because I was looking for validation for myself. And so that was one of the things that is really important is that to understand not to overshare, mm-hmm. but to ask questions, learn exactly. who people are, exactly. and then trust them from there. So, exactly. Yeah. And you know, I have had the privilege of meeting so many wonderful people from different parts of the world. And one of the things I've learned is everyone that you meet, there are certain things that make them tick. Mm their values, their perspective on life, and also the things that they hold so dear, which gives them what we call the self. Mm. So when you meet people, respect them, honor them, don't take them for granted, but if you really want to build a strong and elastic relationship with them, then what you should do is don't make them cheap, Mm. don't make them small, and also don't make them common. Because whatever is common, lose its value. So good. Mm-hmm. So I think this is so good. I mean, it's so good. And I, I, I feel that this topic is not finished. No. So you know what? Let's do a second session of this. Let's go. And we're going to be coming back to you in a second session. So wherever you are and whoever is watching, please share this with your friends. I'm here with Christian Hopkins Vincent. We're having a discussion, and this is a healthy one, building healthy relationships. This is the first session. We're going to come back with another session, and that will be next week. Don't go too far. Share us, subscribe, and also follow us. And if this ministry or this message has been a blessing to you, please don't hesitate to support. There are means and ways of giving, and on the screen, It will show you the best way to do so. Please do so. And out of gratitude and appreciation, we bless you. And may the Lord bless you richly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we'll see you in the next session. Hey, Life International family. Thanks for watching another Do Life session powered by King Adamte. We hope that you are blessed by today's discussion and have learned some key principles that you can apply to your everyday life. Join us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our next Do Life session. 
You can join us by visiting our YouTube channel, where Life International RTP. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss a session. If you're in the Research Triangle Park or the surrounding area, we would love for you to join us on Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our worship service. We're located at 5310 South Austin Avenue, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. If you're not able to join us in person, don't worry. You can join us via live stream by visiting lifeinternational.us slash do life TV. If you were blessed by today's message, we encourage you to give. Your giving is how we can continue to bring you messages like this on a weekly basis. You can give via text using your mobile device by texting your donation amount to 84321. You can also give online by visiting us at lifeinternational.us slash give. Or you can give by scanning the QR code with your mobile device's camera. Thank you for supporting our ministry through giving. We look forward to doing life with you. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. Bye.